Hi, to start my talk, I'm gonna show you a quick clip. So, we all know Disney, and if you're like me, you sang along to every single note in that song. For me, Disney holds a strong sense of nostalgia and happiness. For this reason, it seems fair to say that Disney has a rather large impact. And if you're doubting the influence of the Mouse House, let me show you a couple things that I learned over this semester of studying Disney. Now, obviously, Disney owns television channels, Stores, radio stations, parks, including Disney World, Disneyland, Disneyland Paris, Tokyo Disney Resort, Disney Cruise Lines, and a host of other vacation-related properties. But did you know that they also own ABC, ESPN, Touchstone Pictures, Marvel, Lucasfilm, The History Channel, Lifetime, Pixar, Hollywood Records, and most recently, the 21st Century Fox? The number of major entertainment companies not owned by Disney can be counted on one hand. So most of our entertainment comes from one company, making ignoring Disney practically impossible since they have a near monopoly on all forms of media, whether that be social media with several accounts on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, or in video games such as Kingdom Hearts. Media companies like Disney also use a tactic called product placement, which basically means that they're trying to influence your decisions and integrate their brands into your everyday life. For example, you see someone walking by with a Mickey Mouse shirt on, or you're watching a completely unrelated show, such as Dancing with the Stars or American Idol, and there happens to be a Disney episode or someone covers their song. But why should we care? Recently, I conducted a survey within my high school asking plenty of general questions about Disney, such as, have you been to a Disney park? Do you own Disney brand clothing? Or have you watched Disney Channel? Out of nearly 200 responses, every single student said that they had watched a Disney film. To give you some context for this, high schoolers today were born from 2001 to 2006. That means that we were born around the time movies such as Monsters, Inc., Lilo and Stitch, Finding Nemo, and The Incredibles were released. Disney has been used in our classrooms to teach us friendship and love, and it's been the theme of several of my birthday parties. <laughs> we will still pay good money to see their movies. The Disney mass media company uses its many forms of entertainment to shape its viewers' values and opinions through selective representation. Stant stances on gender, sexuality, ethnicity, and history are provided simply through what they choose to include in their products. Generations of children watch their movies and TV show. So we have a responsibility to know how we're changed by Disney's influence. But what is Disney teaching us with this influence? Within this decade, Disney got into some trouble with the body positivity movement. It's no wonder that at the forefront of this uproar were the ever so popular princesses. These teenage girls are Disney's highest grossing characters and they have a responsibility to portray them in a positive light. Disney princesses range from the age of 14 to 19. While most girls at these age are dealing with acne, scars, and body hair, these Disney princesses are blemishless with only a few freckles added in recent years. Now, this could be chalked up to simplistic animation, but issues with images such as body size simply can't. 
Princesses such as Jasmine and Ariel have waists that are only slightly bigger than their arms. This image sends a wrong message to children watching. To be a princess, you need to be paper thin. On the opposite side of the princesses, we find the Disney villains. While male villains also raise problems, the main issues with Disney's portrayal of villains comes through the female characters. Disney uses this, these women to show what you don't want to grow up to be. The, these characters give children nightmares and could change their views of different physical qualities that villains may share with real people. For example, all of the seven main female Disney villains, Maleficent, Cruella de Vil, Ursula, the evil queen, stepmother, Queen of Hearts, and Mother Gothel, are much older than their younger ingenues. Could this be teaching children not to trust older women? Disney has the capacity to alter the consciousness about growing older, and it's failed in transcending the prejudices against female aging characters. Another notable trait in these characters is that two of them are plus-sized. The only other body-positive characters are also older women, such as Fairy Godmother. This choice may seem as though it's pure coincidence, but look at other Disney characters and notice their figures. There's a lack of representation. Disney has a reason for creating each of their characters the way they do. Every detail is thought out. Children may be unconsciously taught to disrespect and fear their elders, but especially an older, controlling female. <clears throat> but Disney is trying to be more inclusive. Take Moana, for example the most recent Disney princess who by far has the most accurate figure. She has defined muscles that reflect her lifestyle. This design is a major step for Disney in the right direction and will hopefully encourage them to diversify the body types of princesses further. <laughs> Another notable feature of Moana is that she is racially accurate. Disney's past is littered with films that employed racist stereotypes. Beloved classics such as Peter Pan and Dumbo contain very racist caricatures of Native Americans and African Americans. While older films such as the notorious 1946 Song of the South will always be an embarrassment and a piece of grim past that Disney is attempting to leave behind. As a modern company, Disney embraces diversity. Disney's president of motion picture production, Sean Bailey, said in a recent interview, inclusivity is not only a priority, but imperative for us. And it's at the top of our minds on every single project. In companies such as Lucasfilm and Marvel, progress is being made on screen and behind the scenes. Movies such as Black Panther and A Wrinkle in Time feature lead black and biracial characters. Bradford Young became the first black cinematographer in the iconic Star Wars franchise. And Disney now includes entire production teams full of people of color. Among Disney's inner circle, princesses like Moana, Tiana, Mulan, and Merida are at the far forefront of the diversity movement. These princesses provide a role model for many young children that actually look like them. Another example of an image that Disney has both positive and negative portrayals of is the portrayal of women. Especially in more recent times, they are portraying their main female ingenues as more independent, while still holding on to to traditional values such as kindness and being hopeful. Let's go back to Moana, who teaches us that we need to focus on finding ourselves and our purpose in life. Disney also teaches many other valuable lessons, 
the Frozen series, teaches us that love between family and friends is more important than anything. And Princess and the Frog tells us their audience to keep their eyes open to opportunities and to never give up on their dreams. These stories provide valuable lessons for their younger audiences. <clears throat> Even some of the books and tales that Disney chooses to source from and make into films have undeniable feminist themes, such as the importance of the story of Beauty and the Beast. The author can't, cannot avoid conveying the importance of the heroine's will, for until Beauty desires the beast, a beast he will remain. Within gender portrayal, an essential step in Disney history was when they included a scene in which a central female character understood their own sexuality. This event took place in the movie Aladdin, when, Dis when Princess Jasmine seduces Jafar in order to divert attention from her true love. While this is a leap for Disney animation, they should have chosen someone other than a 15-year-old Jasmine. The sexualization of minors shouldn't be a theme that Disney encourages, right? While modern Disney has some progressive views, the older Disney productions, such as Snow White and Sleeping Beauty, portray their princesses as needing to be saved while merely waiting for their true love to come. These movies told stories of rather helpless girls who at one point were in an unconscious state and sung a song about true love and then were woken up by true love's kiss by a boy they barely knew. Hmm. Aurora is only in 18 minutes of Sleeping Beauty, a movie that is literally named after her. Disney, with its vast resources and power, is uniquely situated to reflect the diversity of its varied audience. With the knowledge that these forms of media affect values, it's crucial to be conscious of what we choose to view, especially when it comes to our perception of gender. While Disney's basic modern values tend to be widely agreed upon, they still spark controversy from both sides of the argument. When Disney chooses to include a controversial theme or idea, they receive backlash from the opposing viewpoint. This is to be expected. But they also get critiques from people who have the same viewpoint, who don't agree with the way that Disney portrayed it. <clears throat> this brought upon a new age of Disney, where they address the mistakes of not only their past movies, but of former storylines and fairy tales as a whole. An example of this would be the live-action movie Enchanted. Rather than offering an updated perspective, Enchanted appropriates and reworks folk and fairy tales, the motives of folk and fairy tales to support the conventional Euro-North American worldviews. This film was a Disney-style farce that proves that they can confront some of their less severe issues in a light-hearted way. Media is something that can shape our values and change what we believe in, no matter how hard we try to resist. Disney has become a media giant that cannot be ignored and continues to have an impact, especially on its younger audience. So, what does this all mean? Well, as Disney continues to grow, they have a responsibility to be aware of the influence and use it for good. The Mouse House should encourage its leaders to, to encourage its viewers to be upright leaders as the next generation. This dream can be achieved through diversity in all forms. But it's not only Disney res Disney's responsibility, it's ours as well. We cannot rely on Disney to censor things to our exact liking. Assuming that Disney shares the same values as us is just unrealistic in a world full of conflict. So we have the responsibility to watch and discuss Disney movies, no matter how childish they may seem. In the end, Disney is trying to create the happiest place on Earth. Thank you.